May 31st, 2016 Feast of the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah Shout for joy, O daughter Zion! Sing joyfully, O Israel! Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem! The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. May 31st, the Feast of the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
There are two choices for the first reading. The first is from Zephaniah 3, 14 to 18a. It calls on Jerusalem to rejoice because the King of Israel, the Savior, is in her midst. In fact, Jesus is in the midst of his people because he is already in the womb of Mary. Therefore, our response has to be joy. And in fact, all of the events of the Annunciation, of the Visitation, are filled with joy because that which the prophets had foretold in the Old Testament about the coming of the Messiah was being fulfilled in the person of Jesus. The second choice for the first reading is Romans 12, 9 to 16. This is a type of paranesis, a passage towards the end of Paul's letters, which have a series of quick instructions. This one especially speaks about holding on to what's good, showing love, showing hospitality, and that fits in very well with what Mary is doing. Mary, instead of brooding upon her own difficulties, she's a pregnant, unburied woman in a society where that could get you killed. Rather, she thinks of the difficulties of her cousin and travels to take care of her. This passage does contribute to the needs of the Holy Ones. Bless those who persecute you, bless them, and do not curse them. That the way we respond to evil in the world is not by using violence, by using hate, but rather by showing love, because only love will heal, only love will create. Have the same regard for one another, and don't be haughty, but associate with the lowly. That Mary considered it her duty, her responsibility to serve Elizabeth, because she considered everyone to be more important than herself. We see this attitude again in the Gospel, Luke 1, 39-56, the story of the visitation. Mary goes into the hill country of Judah, traditionally to the town called Ein Karim, and she visits Elizabeth. Elizabeth, hearing Mary's greeting, has an experience of prophecy because the child leaps in her womb. John the Baptist, who's an unborn child, is the first one to give witness to the presence of Jesus in the world. Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit because of this experience, cries out, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Elizabeth can't understand why the mother of the Messiah, the mother of her Savior, should come to her. Mary's response, she prays the prayer that we call the Magnificat. Now the Magnificat is called Mary's Canticle. We're pretty sure that she herself didn't write it. This is a hymn that's largely based on the canticle proclaimed by Hannah, the mother of Samuel. It's a little bit reworked with some psalm verses, and it most probably was an early Christian hymn. Luke, in the first two chapters of his gospel, take three early Christian hymns. This, the Benedictus, the hymn proclaimed by Zechariah, and the Nuctimites, that proclaimed by Simeon in the temple, and he puts them in the mouth of the characters, saying that this is what they would have said. This hymn is a hymn of the Anawim. The Anawim are the poor ones of Yahweh, and Mary represents those poor ones. Now, in a couple of obscure manuscripts, they actually cross out Mary's name and put in the name Elizabeth, because in a way, Elizabeth is in a worse situation than Mary. Mary is a young virgin who's pregnant. Elizabeth is barren. She didn't have a child. So in a sense, that seems like a greater miracle. But remember, the miracle of Mary is much greater. There's a Renaissance picture, Flemish, that shows Mary visiting Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is six months pregnant. She's showing. Mary is enormous. The idea is Mary's pregnancy is so much more filled with grace. And in fact, that is what Elizabeth and John the Baptist themselves recognize. Mary remains with Elizabeth for three months, and then she leaves. And in the next verse, we hear about the birth of John the Baptist. The implication is she didn't stay for the birth. Why? Maybe she had to return before her time of confinement came upon her. But also the three months is significant. Ein Karin is across the valley from a town called Abu Ghosh. And Abu Ghosh is famous in the Old Testament because when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, at a certain point the oxen slipped and the Ark almost fell off and one of the soldiers steadied it. Because he touched a holy thing without permission, he died on the spot. And David became afraid. He didn't bring the Ark of the Covenant in right away. He left it where it was, in Abu Ghosh, for three months. And after three months, when he saw how the Lord had blessed the household of the man who was hosting the Ark, 
he brought the ark in. Abu Ghosh, Ark of the Covenant, three months. Mary, the new Ark of the Covenant in Ein Karim, stays with Elizabeth and Zechariah and John the Baptist for three months. And may God bless us.